What is up, Brassonians? It's time for a brand new adventure, and I am so pumped. What's going on, guys? What is up? Just need ready to go. Woo! Um, we're back in the saddle, but we're in uh, number fives now. We are back to number fives. And, and we are back to number five pretty pretty permanently, actually. Yeah. At least for while uh, while I will be DMing. If anyone else, uh, you know, takes over for a week or whatever, uh, you know, they might choose differently. But I shall be permanently doing level fives. Christian says the good time is at level five. That is my most fun time. <laughs> this would be the best chance it's to kill. sweet spot. <laughs> Yeah, you're not the best to kill you all. You also all get to uh, learn a little bit more about D&D &D better over time. Yeah, we're not like stupid weak, but we're not OP. Should be good. That's all the fun. <laughs> and this time, we actually have a brand new world to explore. Woo! A whole new... Yay. Hey, 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 wait, no, don't do that copyright. That's why I stopped. Someone <laughs> else is always watching. That's why I stopped. Alright, well, if anyone uh, wants to, does anyone have anything they want to say pre-stream? Pre-action? Um, yeah. welcome. I'm... I like, I like turtles. I'm excited. I, I guess, like, let's just, uh, in that case, reintroduce ourselves then. Cool. Um, I'm Christian. I will be DMing for everyone here tonight. We have... Just chime in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Katie. I uh, do all the fun uh, attempts at streaming here, so if something's wrong with the video, please tell me. And um, I have a Batman. He'll be grumbling in the background. And I will be uh, playing a tiefling sorcerer poorly named um, Illyria. Next. Well, uh, I'm, uh, I'm uh, bringing in a new character instead of Gronk. While Gronk is off chasing after Ronin, whatever Ronin may be, um, <laughs> you're going to get to meet Jory tonight. And uh, hopefully... Uh, we have a good time. Well, we'll describe them a little bit later. And I happen to be, I happen to be that last guy's father. And so I'm playing a human. His name is Regis He's got some action to We'll get into that. Yeah. A.K.A. Right. Tim the Greater. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Christian, Katie, Tim, Tim the Elder. <laughs> All right. Well, without further ado, in that case, uh -oh, mid -time. <laughs> pill time. <laughs> <laughs> I I like the map. I'll you. You shall return. As, uh, as Here, just uh, keep. Just keep going and let California would say, I'll be back. <laughs> yeah, just keep your Discord open and listen in. Now, as I welcome you all to the radiant world of Glamaris. Pretty. This is a place where you can find mines filled with di with diamonds. Where you can wield powerful sorcery and face down demons. Where you can travel to the peaks of of mountains and see the world where you can find dungeons and dragons near and far I see what you did there <laughs> and we find ourselves on the on the uh, coast of the kingdom of Trela here at the polished coast we find ourselves in the small city, a city of brass. I see now what this you did place there. may be 
This place may be small in stature, may be small in size, but it has a strong presence of adventurers. What brings adventurers to such a town? The tavern, the freedom, the potentially cursed statue in the center of town. Who knows? <laughs> but it has brought these fine folks to this place as a ship comes from the Mediterranean Ocean here into the dock. It opens up and Tim, you may introduce and describe your character. One that was here. Timma! Oh, no, that'd be me. I am here. Oh, as the boat pulls up, uh, you see a, uh, a uh, moderately sized humanoid creature. Um, apparently with his cloak up over his, his head. Uh, just waiting for the, uh, the gangplank to be set so he can get off this boat and start seeking his new life. Uh, if you know the creatures of this world, you would uh, know a tiefling on sight by the horns that start to, to, to peak a little with the wind. Um, very charismatic, very, like, like there's a draw to him, like, almost a glow. Like, this seems like the guy that you want to be friends with. He's definitely looking for the tavern, for a nice <laughs> cold pint a warm fire, and a darn good story. And indeed, you begin to search for one. But, as soon as your foot steps onto the dock, a, uh, a red-headed man with a, lar with a large uh, beard uh, on, uh, trimmed to be on just both sides of his face comes up to you and he's like, Hey, I see you're new in town. My name's Carlos, and this is my duck. A pleasure to meet you. Well met, Carlos. Well met. Now, Carlos here, uh, he's wearing a bandana, and he has a large number of tattoos on his left arm that you can see. It's quite exposed with different depictions of creatures of the ocean. And he is, uh, with that arm, holding a pipe to his mouth. As he starts to puff a couple. <sighs> <sighs> well, as I see you are new to town, I'll let you off a little bit easy on this one, but we do have a fee for coming into town for the first time. Oh, well, that's quite understood. And I appreciate your, the courtesies of your country. I uh, will uh, make sure that if next time I, I will be able to pay any kind of fee that you might... Yeah. Need. Usually it's uh, five uh, silver pieces, but I know the captain of your ship, and I know that he uh, doesn't like to tell people about it, and I'd rather not have to put yet another uh, newbie to work with my crew. So, uh, listen, you five copper Carlos, and you, let you're a good man. You're a good man, and I flash in my, my most charming smile, and I fish around in my pocket, and I pull out three copper, and I look sadly upon my three copper, and I look at him and I say, Carlos, I am but new to this area, and still trying to find my fortune. Would you let me go for just three copper? Roll me a persuasion check. Persuasion. First roll, 14. <laughs> that is not bad. Well, it is because it, because it's plus ten. So <laughs> I don't think it's plus ten. I think you rolled a ten, right? Is it plus ten? Oh, it is. It is plus ten. Do you have like? How do you have plus ten on that? So it should be it should be plus seven because it starts off at four. I put my initial proficiency in it, making it seven, and then my double proficiency makes it ten. No, it should be, just be a seven. You don't. Do you have expertise with that? Yes. That's my two expertise are in the bottom, my performance and my persuasion. Uh, oh, I see. 
Uh, there's an easier way to do that. Um, oh, which okay. Were, um, I did not realize that. You said performance and persuasion? Yes. Yeah. Oh, I feel so like we're going to be listening to Tim a lot. Oh, perfect. Thank you. Here, I'll, I'll get rid of them there then. All right. Beautiful. All right. All right. Three copper. And you can get off my duck. Now, I warn you, though. If you ever come through the the boat side again, goes back to its five silver pieces. And I'll even throw you the extra two copper you spared me, sir. You're a good man, Carlos. I hope to see you around town. Now, if you're oh, looking, you will, you will. <laughs> I like you. Now, if you're looking for the tavern, as I can see that glint in your eye, be oh, down the road. You'll you'll find the brass dragon. Uh, the tavern, not the statue. But you'll also Beautiful. see the cross from it. I'm going to clasp Carlos's hand real tight. You know, the double clasp. Give him a little double pump and say, may the gods watch out for you, sir. He, uh, head out toward the tavern. He grips your hand just as tightly. You can feel as your hand almost gets crushed by his. Pleasure. We'll see you around. Oh, and uh, be on the lookout. Uh, there are some unruly types coming through town uh, this week. Just if anyone mentions the name Joe, don't uh, don't bother with them. I will heed your words, sir. Now, on a completely separate ship, um, on the other end of the dock, we find our second and third person coming in. Would you like to introduce yourselves? I'm assuming that's us. Um, yep. Bringing back fan favorite. <laughs> that's my story, so I can say that. Um, Illyria, who is a young tiefling, so purpley and pretty. Um, uh, kind of fresh out of sorcery school still trying to get the hang of everything um cast the wrong spell at the wrong time sometimes but trying and um a little bit of a temper and that's about it all right and you tim the elder I do not believe that he is here yet. Is he still taking drugs? He's still taking his pills. <laughs> well, when they're when they're suppositories, you know, you got to get them deep. All right. Um, we'll actually we'll have him uh, pull in on another one in that case later. All right. As you uh, step onto the dock, uh, there are quite a few people bustling in each and every direction, uh, and you know. For, for this town, the best place to be for an adventurer like yourself is also the tavern. But for you, no one has come to greet you, and you aren't quite sure of which direction to go. Now, there are a few people around the docks that you may go up to. There are, There is a uh, half-elf, there's, an, there's a half-orc, and there's a human. Um, half-elf is... Uh, is a nobler looking man. Uh, the half orc uh, is looking a little bit more gruff and he's uh, carrying a couple of barrels around. And then there is a human who is uh, just standing and searching and looking out at the ocean. Okay, well, everybody knows elves are dicks, so I don't want to talk to him. Um. I'm going to go talk to the half-worker, because half-works are good people. Heck yeah. Heck <laughs> yeah, they are. You see him, uh, right. he is, uh, he, he's just wearing, he's just wearing a, uh, very dirty shirt, uh, carrying two barrels, trying, trying to carry two barrels, uh, one with, uh, with his left arm, uh, is, uh, over it, and one with his right arm, uh, keeping it on his shoulder, uh, He's not doing a very good job of keeping the uh, one with his left arm up. He's kind of dragging it as he's like slowly moving forward. 
Um, hiya, want some help? Uh, oh, yeah, I, I would really appreciate that. Could you help me get this back under my, my arm? Love to. Alright. You, uh, begin to, uh, grasp it from the bottom and push it up to him. Uh, roll me an athletics check. Oh, lord, help me. It's not a very hard one. That's good. Helps if I have my character sheet open. Oh, helps if I can read. There we go. Yeah, you you get it up pretty easily. It is quite heavy, and it's kind of amazing that this uh, half orc's able to carry it, especially with one arm. Oh, thank you so much with that. Um, I, well, what brings you to town? I'm looking for adventure. Can you point me in the direction of the tavern? Oh, you're not a one of those. You've probably heard about the uh, brass dragon, right? I heard of it, yeah. Just don't know how to get there. So it's going to be uh, down the road. You'll go down uh, Silver's Path. Uh, Silver's Path is uh, that road. Uh, he, ta he realizes that he can't point with both his arms uh, the way they are. So he takes his his leg and he points it uh, in the, the direction of the uh, of the road. Silver's Path is uh, that way, and he almost falls over as he's trying to do that. Whoa. Um, uh, hey, hey, yeah, no, no, I got it, I got it, I got it. Um, not gonna point again, sorry. But, uh, you'll go down that way, and, uh, it'll be down the road. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, keep an eye out for the large statue. That's probably where, that's probably where most people look. It's right across from it. Perfect. Large statue. Got it. All right. Do we have Tim the Elder back? You are so lucky. All right. So shortly after, you finally get off of the same boat that Alira happened to be on, uh, though you did not meet her while on your uh, travels uh, across the uh, great ocean. You're able to hop off and please describe yourself. Fairly well. I do apologize. <laughs> that was that was Tim the Elder, not Elder. Um, he has kind of a legal bearing, kind of, sort of. Um, pretty well dressed, I'd say. Uh, late twenties, early thirties, something like that. Um, his, his gear that you can see is seems to be. All right. So you see, as the uh, the, the half orc gentleman uh, passes you into the boat, and he's carrying these two barrels, he starts placing them inside. Um, just outside the boat, there are a plethora of people. Uh, moving all throughout the docks, taking in uh, things from the boats, moving them back onto the boats. You guys are about here, by the way. And other than that, you don't have a crazy amount of direction on where to go. Uh, though you did just see uh, um, a few people heading towards the uh, more eastern side of the town, and there are a few, uh, there were a few people talking about a brass dragon.
What do you do? What do you do, Tim? Did you guys so, lose? I'm, I'm a, I'm, you? No, I I can hear you. Okay. So I'm I, I'm gonna head to the to the to the brass dragon because that's where. Oh, I'm Carlos talking about said. the elder. He's uh, right now he's just standing on the boat. I'm seeing what he's doing. <laughs> he's coughing and dying. Oh no. Yeah, I hope not. Uh, IRL. <laughs> Dad. Father. I know he was choking there for a minute. It's awful. I've been there. I've been there at work on the phone. It's not fun. No, it's not. Oh. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. Thank okay. you. Barking. I'm, you know, followed up for a mention of a through the, I guess it's at the end of Brass Dragon. And um, that seems to be a good place to um, gather local lore, local things, a good place to trade information. I'm just following along the group. Like I said, I'm being observant. Lots of things. I can tell this is a group of adventurers because of the way they carry themselves, their weapons. Um, yeah. Before you see them, though, please roll me a perception check to see if you see. Perception check. Perception check. Perception check. Perception check. Yeah, you do see a few people heading off in the direction of the east. And uh, using your keen eyes, you see the, the glint of a building that does have brass lining on the top of it. I'm sorry. A building with brass lining. Yep, okay. up on the top. Would it take much, it take much to change Puru to Regis? You, there? you have to do it under your cog. Yeah, you just have to... Okay. Uh, yeah, on the right-hand side, all the way at the bottom, change your name from what it is to to what it is because that's the correct here's the correct character sheet correct Absolutely, yes. yeah you just have to change your name on the bottom yeah, or it says, go to the yeah, cog. Where it says as yeah or if you go to the cog you can then change your display name but yes and you were saying you were heading in that direction All right. Well, first, the uh, two adventurers before you, they are able to make it to the plaza. Now, the plaza itself, uh, there isn't quite a lot of traffic going through the very center of it. Yes, right here. Through the very center of it, there isn't quite a lot of, uh, of traffic. However, you can see something towering above everything else. A statue made completely of brass of a dragon Sounds like a brass dragon. I really yes. hope we don't have to fight a dragon at level 5 <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not a brass dragon Now this dragon um, you can see that its wings are massive and they uh, connect all the way from the back all the way to the tail uh, it is standing up on its two hind legs with its uh, with its uh, four legs uh, up in the air. And it has uh, what looks like on the sides uh, to be large plates uh, of scale. Do I kind well, of get any kind of vibe off of it? Like kind of being a paladin? <clears throat> Nothing religious. Um, okay, but it does exude a, a sort of power that you've never quite felt. Uh, you've you've heard actually. You know what? Roll me a history check. Just so happens I'm on that. Bam! All right. You've heard stories of uh, from other about dragons, about how just being in their very presence can be terrifying. Even the most seasoned adventurer can see a dragon and run with complete fear in their eyes. This statue gives you a bit of an inkling of that feeling, of how it actually feels to be in the presence of a dragon. Well, 
That's a scary statue. But at the same time, there is something that draws you to it. <clears throat> Maybe it's the artistry. Maybe it's just the magnificence that is a dragon. You can't quite tell. But it is staring directly at the other side of the street where there is the tavern, the Brass Dragon. And it is around this time that Regis, you come in and then you're also able to see this. And you see these two adventurers also staring at this large statue. That thing is cool. Yeah, you feel the exact same thing. There's not really a whole lot beyond that. Um, and it's reasonable that you would also know this. You know, where there's no reason to roll another history check. Here, no, no. Can I, uh, DM, if I may, can I play out my character since uh, this is, was my history check? Yeah, and absolutely. I, I'm standing there in the courtyard, and I'll stand there, and I'm like, it's told that men have flee at the thought of dragons, let alone their presence. Almost as if you can feel it hit now. And then I turn and walk into the brass dragon. All right. You walk into the... And you start to uh, see just how insane it can be inside there. Uh, what do the, the rest of you do? Um, yeah. Yeah. All right. I mean, I think it's cool, but I'm ready to get some action. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, so you all enter the tavern marked by the large statue staring it down. The brass dragon is, is a den of unruly audacious, daring, unkempt, and often reckless adventurers. Countless tables of people that look just as well-armed as you, uh, playing cards, playing dragon chess, uh, doing arm wrestles, uh, drinking their fill, and even a couple in the back having a small bar fight hustle. You see, uh, there are four barmaids around. Um, there are four servers. Uh, halfling, human, elf, and a half-elf. And there is a single male dwarf manning the, uh, the bar. I, I immediately uh, start flirting with the the nearest barmaid. Yeah. <laughs> the nearest one to you is a uh, female elf. I'm gonna lean over and uh, whisper a dirty joke in her ear, but like nobody can hear other than her. But the, the punchline is gonna be, um, no, I barely even met him. All right, roll me a, uh, a persuasion check. Oh, sorry. Um, there you go. You see as she snickers and then and then uh, just kind of turns away from you. And I'll, I'll uh, continuing on yeah. her uh, business. I, I, I'll continue on over to the bar myself and uh, order order a uh, just an ale, whatever the local ale is. All right, you get up to the uh, to the bar, and you uh, see that there's this dwarf manning it. Uh, he looks kind of old. He's got some gray gray lining in his beard, and he's bald. What are you having? Well, what's uh, the what's the the local uh, ale of the of the month around here? What do you what do you got going on tap? Burrow beard brew. 
Mine's sounds perfect. fantastic. All right. I want to see coin from you before anything else, though. Oh, of course, of course, my good man. And I, I pull out my coin pouch and set it on the t- on the on the bar. All right. Burrow beer brewed. Burrow beer brew is going to be a silver piece from you. As he starts off, or in a pint for you, in a uh, I'll, in a anchored. I'll, I'll fish out a silver piece. Make sure to keep track of my gold now. Yeah, remember, one gold piece is ten silver, and one silver piece is ten copper. They say metrics don't work, right? What about you two? What are you having, or are you just here to I, town board? I look around and, and if, um, is there a a menu board, a placard or something for for food? Yeah, but it really just boils down to you want the mutton, lamb, you want the goose, you want what do you want? The lamb is the same thing, son. Yeah, what do you want? Tell me if I'll tell you if I have it. I'm the only tap. Actually, I need to have everything. I go, no, I go to a table and set and sort of uh, wait, wait for a, a server, a waitress to come by, bar maid. All right. But I'm going to ask. I'll be asking her. I'm going and sitting down. Oh, I see. I understand now. Yeah. So, t- it takes a few minutes, but the halfling waitress comes up to you, and she says. Hello, my name is Adesha. I'll be your server today. How can I help you? Greetings, Adesha. My, I'm, I'm, I'm called Regis. Um, I would like some food, and the, and I'll have that you suggest um, an ale for me. I'll take um, what do you have? What do you have? And she tells me what she has. I'll have the the fowl, please. The goose, was it? Yeah, I can do that for you, hon. It's going to be for that, and as well as a uh, a tankard of our uh, Burrow Beard Brew. It's going to be one silver and five copper pieces. Well, I dig out. I dig out a couple of silvers, and I say, "You, you can keep the change, darling." Thank you. She uh, takes it, pockets it, and uh, goes off on her way um, back into the kitchen. Alira. Um, would it be reasonable that I've, like, visited our favorite barbarian librarian here, and so I kind of know the deal a little bit? Uh, the deal about what? Like, what prices are, what's kind of going on, like, would it, I guess, mm. I'm looking to, like, slide a silver and be like, my usual, or, like, that kind of thing, or would I not be that familiar? Um, the special. Let's roll a luck roll for that. A luck roll? Do you know roll? how to roll a D100? Uh, slash R So we'll say 100. over we'll say it's over um, uh, over 65. So 66 and up and uh, you you can. Okay, so let's see. 5% chance. Oh yeah, I gotta do the thingy. That is not it. <laughs> nope, for sure. I'm being in the town. Alrighty. Um. So then, greetings, barkeep. How can I help you today? I would love an ale, please. You want the uh, you want the special, or you want uh, something else? Uh, sure, the special. All right, I'll get you some beer, burrow beard beer. That sounds amazing. That'll be one silver from you. Pull out your coin pouch. I pull out um, a silver piece, put it on the bar. Mm, he takes it and he uh, starts pouring you an ale as well. Uh, right now you are sitting next to... Uh, Jory. 
I look um, over at Alira and... You in town? Yeah, first day, what's going on? Not a whole lot, I uh, heard this was the place to be to start making my way on my own. You know, uh, after things I've seen, uh, always had, uh, you know, either either my troop with me or, you know, my, uh, my fellow comrades in arms. And now I'm just trying to see if uh, I can figure this thing out on my own. How about you? What brings fresh, you? Fresh out of school on my touring year. I'm trying to see what I can learn, travel, try to be a... A better sorceress. Well, sorceress. Ah, oh, you know, I, I know a thing or two myself, and I'll, I do a little thaumaturgy and, you know, make a little fl flicker of a flame, you know, a little sparkle. But of course, you know, it comes naturally to us tiefling, you know. Yeah, that's cute and all. I usually go for a much bigger fire. Oh, I love the inside joke. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, I wonder what's uh, I wonder where the uh, sort of bulletin they got a bulletin board around here where we can uh, see what sort of jobs are available, or maybe the maybe uh, barkeep knows something. Look over the barkeep, barkeep. What's there to do in town? What's there uh, some people to save, things to do? Damsels in distress. Hi. So as you're speaking of this, uh, you're another uh, person who came on or into town at the same time, Regis. So you do overhear this as you start hearing these other adventurers talking about making their way and getting coin. Um, and you also hear as the barkeep is like, yeah, there's the uh, town bounty board. We keep it upstairs. You can get a kind of uh, crazy posting from just hunting uh, some of the local goblins or maybe uh, getting some beast skins. Every once in a while, there's a strange one that gets there, but usually nothing crazy until, uh, you know, certain times of the year. Oh, what time of year would the, is the best? When does it get crazy? Your friend's right. It is this time of year. Ooh, dibs on the first no job. We have. Most, uh, yes. most adventure coming in. Very nice. Very nice. Well, you two look like a couple of strapping young individuals. Why don't we uh, band together and see what we uh, might accomplish around here, huh? I'm sure there's a lot I can Amazing. learn from you guys. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm sure we can all, all learn a bit from each other, the power of friendship and all. Oof. They say two heads are better than one, but have three heads. So I uh, flip the uh, barkeep an extra silver, and I will pocket my pouch and uh, go start. Go ahead to take a look to see where this uh, bounty board is. Yeah, go up, up the stairs, you'll find it. Thank you, sir. Now, as this is happening, yeah, as you're uh, saying that, Regis, you're, you, you smell the aroma of the goose as it comes towards you. And, oh, it's, it smells absolutely amazing. Uh, it comes with a burrow beard brew, which, again, looks quite good. I 
note DM, I am the stupid at these character sheets. Is there, like, a notes section somewhere so I can, like, keep track of the fact that, like, the local brew is, like, Burrowbeard? Or is there not really that feature on Roll20? No, so what you can do is uh, go to your character sheet. Uh-huh. And then what you can do is go to bio. And you can place uh, all sorts of notes in this area. In that area. Okay, perf. So that's usually what I do. Um, though I believe that you could also just go to uh, bio and info and edit from there. So like you could click the edit button and uh, add in all sorts of stuff there as well. Okay, sweet. So that would be uh, probably the best way to uh, go about that, in my opinion. Gracias. Yeah, I was just like, where could I write this down? <laughs> so while she's getting that figured out, you guys go up to the uh, bounty board, I'm guessing. Yeah, he's eating. He's eating. He's hot. Yeah, I bound up. I want to get there first, start looking at stuff. Right. See what the what the options may be. And I'm since definitely... We, since, we have agreed, since we have agreed to work together, um, yeah. I'm trusting these people to uh, pass on any pertinent information. Plus, it's not that far away. We can always run down and tell you if need be. Be up here soon. Yeah, we'll see you up there, boss. All right, you guys head up to the uh, bounty board, and uh, you see that there are quite a few other adventurers that are uh, gathered around it. Um, there's a uh, tiefling woman. There is a half elf man. There's a uh, half-orc man. There's a couple of uh, human uh, males. And a few other people around. Interesting. The bounty board has all sorts of different postings, most of them being uh, monster. Uh, a lot of uh, goblin infestation and uh, bugbear infestations around though there are also a few orc encampments. Uh, roll me perception. Either of us or Jory? Any, yeah. Anyone that's there. Well, except for except for Regis. Except for Regis. Regis right now is enjoying his, uh, his goose. He perceives the goose to be very good. All right. Oh, did it. And the ale tasted. Oh, the ale is very yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I still have my ale. I'm drinking it. <laughs> Alright, Alira. You see that there is one particular one that's hiding behind a goblin posting. Uh, and it has a star on the upper left corner of it. And you can see that star. Ooh. Though you don't see exactly what it is posting um, I pull the notice off the board. You pull it, and everybody kind of just <gasps> gasps as, that, as they see pull something off the board. Ah, uh, this is the one, boys. It's got a star, so it must I... be good. Listen, I trust your instinct on this. Let's take a look. What are we looking at here? What do we got? What do we got? And the posting reads as follows. Desner Dark Draft. Missing. This Come to my house here in Brass City. And I will give you more details. Signed. Durs Derringer. Durs Derringer. Do we have a scribe who's writing this down? I know Katie had mentioned it. This would be helpful. Oh, but then did she keep Durs doing it? Dead. No, she didn't. Let me 
Well, Call no, that's it. fine. So, Durs Derringer. I got that at least. Yeah. Durs Derringer. Durs Derringer. Let's. Why don't we take this down to uh, uh, Regis and uh, and to discuss this? Well, we don't even know each other's names. So, by the way, my name is uh, Jory. Jory Nunro. Good name is Jory. I'm Illyria. Well, Mandel area. Let us go down and uh, discuss with our, uh, our uh, other newfound compatriot. So yeah. We can get down to the bottom of this disappearance. Yeah. As you but... are, uh, as you guys are uh, about to leave, one of the French uh, actually uh, places their hand on your shoulder, Jory, and is like, you, "Your friend knows." As you as you look back, at another tiefling. Um, one of the tiefling men there, uh, wearing chainmail and hold and wielding a longsword. Your friend knows that as soon as you pull someone off the bounty board, you have to take the quest, right? I look down at the hand that's on my shoulder and kind of give him a bit of a scathing look. And I advise him that uh, he need not worry about others when he should worry more where he puts his hands. Are you turn and walk away? Are you attempting to intimidate? That sounds like an intimidation roll. Let's uh, pull that up. Now, as you say that, he takes his hand off. He's like, and I think that you should be more worried about how you talk to other people, and more worried about taking that kind of quest. Nah, we got this. Just, we got this, guys. I'll just turn and continue back downstairs on on our job, since we've just now taken it. All right, you head downstairs as you uh, get to your uh, new compatriot, who is just about done fin with his uh, goose. Heads up, Regis, we got a job. It's got a star on it, so it's definitely good. It looks like it's a missing persons job. Persons, woo! Missing persons. Well. Ale's hitting me hard. <laughs> and we have to go well, see... Well, we were informed that we're already on the mission. Well, Alir is already on the mission, and we've agreed to help her already. So it looks like we're going to help, help uh, Durs Derringer find uh, a missing person. He said he's... It's a little vague. He's going to give us more details when we get there. But it doesn't matter if it's hard, because we already took it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> star it's already it's yeah. Alira Aly <laughs> is technically already on this mission. And as I said, I've already agreed to help, so we're uh looks like we're headed to the address there. Yeah, so then you guys head over to the hammer district, unless there is something else you guys need to do. Um, I finished my beer. All right. We guys see I'm assuming, I'm assuming we're not heading out um, immediately to to complete said task. I figure we're just going to gather the information, probably get our supplies together, rest, and then take on said endeavor. Yes. Yeah, we don't even know what supplies we need yet. Exactly. All right. So yeah, we'll 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 we'll, we'll go get this more information. We'll we'll jot it down in our journal. Get the deets. Alright. You all finish your beers. You uh chug them all down, slam your tankards, and you head out. Salon. Oh, wait, that's what you said. You all have the hammer district, where the house is noted notated to be. I 
I'm assuming there was an address on this notice, or the houses are marked, or okay. Yeah, I'm not marking every single uh, building, unfortunately, though. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. Change the music back to the town music. I'm just Dad, making what sure. What are you doing? What am I? What, what do you mean? What am I doing? It's clicking a lot of proficiencies. That's something to just ask me, and just to ask yeah. me outside. Just, the just ask him because right now you're just flooding, <laughs> flooding this other proficiency. Yes. If you get a, if you get a bonus for like a for a language, you just use the uh, compendium, and you you drag it into your sheet. Okay. And, um, All right. Okay. Same thing for everything else. Yeah. Yeah. Racial if something that's too. not in the compendium, then you need to just audit, you just need to do it on your own. But like pretty much yeah. everything that you're looking for is in the compendium. All right, you guys head over to the Hammer District, and you find this uh, small house. Uh, it's shorter than the other two houses it's next to, and kind of uh, crammed in the middle of both of them, uh, with a single door uh, about. Uh, with a single door that opens into it. I walk up and knock. Just as you were about to knock, or the door opens, you get a chance to knock. Hiya! We're here about your missing persons ad. And as you look upon the person on the inside, uh, it is a uh, gnome with a black slicked back hair um, who uh, is hunched over. Yes? You are here about this missing person? Oh! You do have the fire! Come in! Come in! As he uh, grabs your arm and starts pulling you into the house. I follow in after. Quickly. And upon entering the house, what you thought was this small home turns into this massive expanse uh, where it's clearly much wider and larger inside the house than it is outside. Cool. It's bigger on the inside. Oh, Durs will be quite happy to know that someone's coming for the, for, for the job. No one has been able to take it recently. Well, turns out I right like there. stars. <laughs> and we will do our best to. Excellent, excellent. Good. Good to know. Good, good. All right. Um, <clears throat> uh, my name is. Uh, my, my name is uh, Jonathan, and I am the. Uh, I am the butler for this house. Uh, I will go grab uh, uh, Mr. Durs and bring him here. Thank you, thank you. We'll uh, seat ourselves in the in the in the library, or they're they're right up in that study? door, uh, the study. Okay. Uh, I will also bring cups of tea. Uh, how many sugars do each of you like? Oh, I take it straight. Ooh, three. Three. Three! Three. And you? I'll, I'll take uh, Earl Grey with uh, two, three sugars and no cream, please. Mm. Yes, yes, I will grab that for all of you. And I shall get the master. Thank uh, you. Any, thank any you, sweets? John. No. No, thank you. No, thank you. No. I see. All right. Uh, uh, seat yourselves in the study. Uh, just Very be good. Very good. I. I walk into the study and start looking, uh... Start studying. Stu right, yeah, I check out the room. I'm gonna... Yeah. You, as you enter through the uh, door, uh, the study is this, uh... Um, actually quite fair-sized fair, fair -sized room. Um, you know, about, uh... About ten feet by ten feet. 
and it houses a couple of bookshelves filled with book with different types of books. A uh, uh, small section you can see is dedicated to alchemy. A uh, small section dedicated to herbalism, and uh, and then two more sections that are dedicated to different types of spells, and what and uh, spell casting. Okay. And then Def there is a desk um, with a plethora of different items on it. Um, one of the notable things there being a set of Newton balls. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, I immediately start clacking them. And there is a uh, small table with three chairs as well okay. um, in front of the in front of the desk. Oh, well, this man is obviously not a military man. There's no books on uh, anything martial at all related. No war. No start, art of war, no. start checking out the spell book titles. What was that? Uh, what was that, Curse? Um, start checking out the spell book titles. Kind of like looking over, like Reddit, Reddit. Ooh. <laughs> Look for the one with the Oprah's approval sticker on there. Yeah, very uh, important that it's part of the Cut the Oprah. <laughs> the O Book Club. Yeah, there the are a couple of uh, there are a couple of different ones. Uh, one simply named Nexus, um, one named uh, Nimble Spells, and where to use them. One named Renovated Scroll, um, and then there's one called Echo, Foe of the Incoming Storm. Uh, a plethora of other ones. Nice If you're looking for something specific, I will need a perception check. Okay. Let's see if you can find something. Uh, where did you get this from? I thought you were human. Yeah, I thought you were human. I am. And where are you getting access? I'm sorry. I you're you're just human, right? Yeah. Prerequisite for what? Oh, you got. You got a. You got the. Okay. So that was the feat you took being a variant human. Right, instead of um, upping his skill. I'm not looking for, like, a specific spell or anything. I'm just kind of, like, impatient killing time. So I'm, like, taking a book off, flipping through it, putting it back on the shelf. That kind of thing. Right. So, again, though, that doesn't... Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, Curse. Yeah, that doesn't change that you still need to roll a perception check. Right, but I... Uh, my proficiency bonus is the yeah. Okay. I, I understand that. So you need to adjust that in your, uh... Uh, in your, uh... Core area. So, let me do that for you. Closely. Alright. Yeah. So you do happen to find one. Let me just pull it up. Sorry about that, guys. I start to. Uh... Have you ever heard of the story of Darth Pelagius the Wise? <laughs> uh, watching the little 
balls clack back and forth. You find the uh, the tome of uh, the tome of soul gifts. Soul gifts. Yeah. Now it is around this time while you guys are going through all of the books that. A, the, there is another man who comes in along with Jonathan, as Jonathan comes in with your uh, three teas, uh, or rather with three cups for you and a teapot. And he's like, oh, I've nice I, I, I brought uh, Master Durs. And you see a tall elven man with a black cloak on, um, with small symbols all over it um, of stars that are uh, engraved in silver. Z looks over you and is like, Well, this is not my library. Simply the study. I understand you're in need, sir. I, um, please. We are here to help. Sit. And if you wish to read that book, perhaps I'll let you borrow it at another point in time. But for now, I believe you came for my posting. If you did, I slipped the book. I, exactly where it was. I gesture to, uh, you know, Illyria to sit. You know, we, always the lady first, ladies first. <laughs> I shrug, put the book back, and take my tea and sit down. Right. Yeah, Jonathan begins pouring everybody their tea and uh, putting in uh, the sugars as needed. And while he's doing this, uh, he also pours one for hers, um, also sliding him a small plate of lemon bread. I have a colleague who lives not that far out of town. His name is, uh, Desner, Dark Draft. And he often works in his tower, procuring new types of spell scrolls and learning of different types of magic. Now, I have hired quite a few people to go to his residence and see if they can find him, for I have not heard of it. I have not heard from him in quite some time. These uh, individuals that you've sent out, have any of them returned with, with any, any word, or have they all just taken your money and run? No, I do not pay until the job is done. No. Have, again, have they returned with any word? Or? Most of them have uh, not returned. Though I have had a few come back. Um, but they simply babble on and don't say much of anything anymore. And therefore, I must ask of many adventurers to go and see if they can find my friend in his tower. How far away is the tower? Can I, well, can I roll a perception to see if it feels like he's like holding back? Insight. Insight. Oh, there it is. Hey, it's a checked one. Boom. All right, 21. From what you can tell, it just doesn't make sense. Why does he have to send someone else? Yeah. He said he's hired several. Yeah, at what point is it uh, worth his time to go himself, huh? Perhaps he knows. You were saying, Illyria? Um, how, how far, far away? away? Yeah, how far away is this tower? It's about half a day's travel. Oh, that's not bad at all. 
Hmm. It takes half a day, not because of the distance, but because you need to go west. Let me pull us back to the uh, map. Everybody's water. This is Brass City. Here. If you guys want to zoom in to about 160%, his tower is about a day in this direction, where there's virtually nothing. I can't see. That's Anything what... other than the Brass City. Oh, I'm sorry. Didn't pull you guys over. Yeah, it didn't pull you over for some reason. Oh, okay. Yeah. Here. So it's just uh, the out on the peninsula, huh? Yeah. So, weird. so uh, why, why haven't you uh, ventured out there yourself there? There's. Unfortunately, I cannot. C cannot or will not? Cannot. And I will not provide any more information on this. Well. Do you have any reason to think he doesn't want to be found? No, no. He and I were the best of pen pals. Oh, you, you seem quite the learned uh, individual, sir, uh, but just based on the books here and your study alone. Um, you, you have come across many, many a spell and incantation in your life. Have you seen nothing that might have caused this ailment that these people that do come back have been stricken? <laughs> My only guess is that the simple presence of being in such a powerful, magical, arcane place could have broken their mind. It's also possible that Desner, being the type of wizard that he is, might have had something to do with that. Typically, he follows in the illusions. He is a wizard of illusions. So much of what dabble see. in the dark. What was that? Has he ever been known to dabble in the dark? The dark. Oh come now, sir! The dark magics. Are you a fool? Gently kind, are sir, you? You are looking to hire us. I believe you took the posting. That but true. are you a fool? Do you not understand magic? All the magic I know is what I possess myself. And I do again do my little stupid little fireworks thaumaturgy, you know. That's not how thaumaturgy works. Oh, yeah. That's not how thaumaturgy works. You're thinking present. I thought. You no, know, I have that one too, so. <laughs> I yeah. the present digitation then. You're right. Digitation. It's like you throw in your voice into a flame? Yeah. Right? No, I, can, I, pre I do have present digitation as well, so technically I just misspoke. It's all sensory effect with like your eyes or something. Um, uh, sorry about that, guys. A phone. <laughs> but. He continues and says, There is no such thing as dark magic. Those who call it such simply do not understand. There is simply... That is a matter of perspective. So, um... I'm, uh... Hearing, hearing him say that, though, like, hearing the way he, he's presenting, that there is, oh, there's no dark side, it's only how you use it, like, the whole, uh, you know, there's no such thing as an evil gun, it's the person holding it, um, but 
do I, would I know, like, is, the, is there any, um, you know, evil in the world like that? Necromancy? If you want to bring that up to him, you can. Well, no, because he's just going to deflect the same way he did with the way he the way he did. He's like, it's always a matter of perspective. So that's fine. I, I'm not going to bother. Yeah, it could bring up a very interesting conversation, though. It, it, it could. It absolutely could. So yeah, let's let's bring that up. So so um, but, but Durs, what would you not yourself consider um, necromancy to be of the dark arts? You could argue that. So then you just said there was no dark magic. So which is necromancy also happens to contain the spell revivify. Though it does include the spell animate dead, as what you are probably talking about. Or perhaps you could be thinking of the spell spare the dying. There are many ways to use magic. Yes, you can see the animation of the undead to be quite evil. That's quite oh. unholy, yes. However, you say simply that the school of necromancy is evil for what it can do. You miss the point of magic. Well, have you ever known your compatriot to do anything evil? No. He may be a little strange, but Desner has never done anything that would be outwardly evil. So you don't think he's deliberately harming the people that are coming to find him? No. It's more than likely that those who go there simply fall under different magical effects. Like they stumble upon uh, the wrong magic themselves, rather than the magic itself be cast upon them, per se. Indeed. So I, I'm going to try to ask him for just ask him is there is there anything possible? Like I want to use my persuasion, like my my charm and everything on him to to ask is there is there anything anything at all that we need to know walking into this before we head out? I roll persuasion. Well, bam! <laughs> all right. Yes. The reason why I can't go is because I cannot enter the house. Because I need permission to enter. Oh. Why do you think I live in such a small house with no windows? I want to go all twilight and be like, say it! I'm... I'm... <laughs> Think, right? That I can't enter anyone else's home as he stands up and realizes that he is far taller than you realized. And I'll bet his complexion is rather pale. It is. Checks you out. You can see the hint of sharper teeth. The, a small bite on his neck as he pulls down his cloak. Well been working on the to cure me. Okay. Works then for we me, will Mr. Do our best to uh, um, help this cure along and we will find out what's gone what's gone awry with your with your dear friend and see what's going on. With you have my 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 word. Thank you. And I give him kind of a a, a nod, a, kind of a bow and well, uh, yeah, I will, uh, if you guys are ready, we should, uh, probably get prepared, uh, for our foray into the wilderness. Yeah, let's go get some rations and get on our way. And Jonathan comes to, gra to grab all of your teacups, and he, uh, says, let me, let me bring you guys out. Thank you so much for coming. <clears throat> Very kind of you, good sir. And I let him 
I am so happy. I'm so happy that you guys came to help the master. Well, hopefully, hopefully, uh, we'll have a good word to, to, to give you and the master soon. I do hope, I do hope. Uh, if you all are able to save him and and get uh, and get Desner uh, to safety, uh, did uh, did the master tell you about the reward? Right now, I'm more concerned about getting your master that cure he's looking for. We can figure that all out later. And I'm sure he'll make it worth our while. He will. He definitely will. Uh, it's it's actually on the posting if you didn't see it. He, he pulls it um, and just like fully unfurls it. And uh, the the reward is 500 gold. Each. No, total. See? You see where I got it from, Christian? You see where I get it from? <laughs> you see? Did you see? No, Dad, you missed it. You missed it. Oh, man. Yeah. And that is where we will end. Sebastian. Oh, yeah, God. each? <laughs> total. Oh. Uh, alrighty. Well... I'm intrigued. I hope everybody else is intrigued, because it's going to be fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. if the magic that this uh, tester is dealing with, we'll it's quite possible that he has put up uh, wards. Yeah. Keep, keep, uh, keep him safe uh, from some of the things he may be dealing with, the creatures, things. So. Or not. <laughs> right. Um. We. No. Uh, we've ended the. We've ended the session. Yeah, it's, it's session. It's ended. <laughs> Jory's gone. Jory's. Jory's not there. Which is sad because Jory was going to perform. At the at the end. Well, that's okay. Aww. We can do it next time. That's going to be so good. Um, we're going to have a couple more adventures in our next one, I believe. Uh, join us, and we'll, uh, I'm sure Christian will definitely weave them in. Thanks, everybody, so much for joining us for our world-building episode. Uh, we're going to, or I'm going to, continue to post our new D&D videos every Sunday um, with our new session. And like, share, and subscribe if you'd like to see more of this content. Check out some of our other D&D one-shots or our Snacks series, which is, um, the whole series is out, so you can binge that if you'd like. And that's all I got. Thanks for being the best community ever. And we'll see y'all in the next video. Bye! Bye! Stay classy. Bye!